Hey guys, and welcome back to another video from the Parrot Bros. I'm Rob. And I'm Dom. And he's behind the camera. Today, we're gonna look at fitting the cycle arches and the wing stays that hold them up. But before we get stuck in, let's roll to the intro. So guys, today, we're looking at cycle arches. There's many different options of these. These are a, from Mofast, that lovely carbon light work, but they're full rounded. You can also get, I think they're called CSR wings from NK, and they're sort of round with like a straight kick and then down. Um, you can get carbon, you can get fiberglass, you can even get alley ones that are rolled and they look quite smart, obviously if you wanna paint them or something. Um, but we've gone for, for four. We've gone for Mofast ones, carbon fibre, and these uh, accommodate up to a 205 size tyre. And we've got 195, so they'll fit perfectly. And obviously that will be the finished product where it sits like that. But to get it to that point, we have to use a wing stay. And that is what we have here. Obviously, as you can see, they're bare metal, and that is because you have to bend them first and then get them powder coated because when MK supply them, obviously you can have different size wheels, different size tires, as we said in our previous video, the tire video and wheel video. Um, so this is the offside one. So obviously it has a couple of fixing points and you have to sort of fit it and mark it. They say to bend it, but we're just gonna double check it and make sure that that bend will be in the right place. But you basically pull two 45s. So you'll pull a 45 and then another 45 to pull you straight 90 degrees. That'll come up, over, and then along. And then you can fix your cycle wing to that. Uh, to bend it, we made a little tool, thanks to the help of uh, MB Special, and that is basically, <clears throat> there was some chatter online that when you bend these, you're putting stress on this weld, and that can crack, and then you have to get it re-welded. But what uh, MB said, get a piece of steel, get it from Wix, get it from B&Q, get it from your local steel merchant, and basically cut the slot, the width of your cycle wing. Ooh, here he goes. Easier to hold. So that goes on and it's nice and snug and then you can pull it either way and you'll clamp the bit you're bending. You'll only ever clamp this bit in the vise and you'll only ever bend on that bit. So then there's no pressure at all going through this joint, which means hopefully it won't crack. We can get it done, we can get it powder coated and get them on. Whee. <laughs> but yeah, I think we should consult the guide first. So we'll pause it here for a second. I'll get Dom to get the guide. We'll have a little look. Maybe we'll get one on and get it marked up and we'll, uh, we'll show you what we've done. The other thing I will say before we pause it is you're going to need something for bonding. Um, oh, okay. Once fitted, obviously you've got to get them powder coated first anyway, so yeah. you'll never get it all done in one day. But there's a couple of means of fixings. Now we're probably going to go for physical fixings like a bolt or a nut or a screw or something yeah. because you've got two options really, screwing and bonding. Bonding is probably the nicer looking because there's no physical yeah. fixings visible. However, if you are doing lots of track days and is getting a real workout, that could quite easily get wind under it, get loose and take off. So it might not, and if, you know what I mean? If you've never had any issues or you can fiberglass them on or whatever, yeah. then happy days. But we're gonna put a couple of fixings in, easy on, easy off, and also- yeah. We'll use some nice sort of countersunk black dome washers. So they'll sort of blend into the carbon anyway. And the other thing is that you have to bear in mind when you go for an IVA, you're going to need to have a repeater, uh, an indicator lamp in the wheel arch because it's the most extruded part of the car at the front. Um, the only issue with having the rounded ones is it doesn't make life easy no. because there's no particular place to put them. Now Rob and Mofast, because as soon as Mofast put them up for sale, I messaged Rob and Mofast told us he'd already sent us some, um, is he's made some custom ones that actually fit nicely against the arch. Rob will demonstrate now. And they take the normal indicator that everyone uses and they just sit and you can just bond them on and then wire them from the inside, lovely jubbly. And they actually glow up. So the yeah. whole thing is, is um, translucent. So it actually will all glow orange. So you should get quite a nice um, look to it. But if you add the ones from say MK that have the flat piece, it does make it a lot simpler on where you would put your indicator. So do consult that. Plus obviously you could have body colored, um, and there's, there's, I mean, there's a million options, like Rob said. But yeah. let's, uh, let's consult the guide and get stuck in. Now we've disassembled the car and we probably should have done this before we fit the brakes because I had to take the caliper off to do, undo the bolt for the caliper. 
I had to take the disc off, sorry. So yeah, we got it on now. We just wanted to see it, it's reasonably strong. So it says to pull the first bend just where this tube meets that, 45 degrees, and then you'll 70 mil up, then pull another 45 degrees, and that'll pull you straight across the arch. Obviously with the back, it's a slightly different distance, but you still pull the bend at the, the weld. So what we'll do, we'll take it off. We just wanted to check that that looks right. We'll take this off, we'll get it in the vise, and we'll show you how we're gonna bend it to hopefully not crack that weld. So guys, we got one prepared earlier. I don't know if you can see that. No. But basically, <laughs> we've got our tool and we had to chamfer off the edge so then when you pull it, it sort of pulls round the vise. Um, obviously, we've slotted that. That's the thickness of the, the steel we're working with. with. Obviously, you've got your bar in the vise. We're not gonna touch the weld bit at all. We're literally gonna use the tool, go from underneath and put it onto the, the bit we're bending and just pull it round 45 degrees. The way we've done this, obviously it says the, the bend is tight to this weld. So we've literally just got a gap of the thickness of the tool and that, that gets us the perfect bend there. And then in a minute, we'll show you what you need to do the next one. But if I have a go at pulling this, it's a bit tough. Normally Dom would step in and give me yeah, a hand, which he will. Hand. And you just pull it round. Don't be afraid to stop and check or yep. more. So this is why we've had to chamfer the corner of the tool because basically the bend goes at the weakest point, which is right on the edge of where the vice is. Um, Rob's having a murder with this. I had, I had a shocker earlier on. Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah, so lay that on there and you can see if the gap gets larger as it gets further away, then you're not quite at 45. Yep. And yet. you just need to give it a little bit more so of a tweak. Come back over that or get yourself something and draw a 45 and then just hold it on. So if we get the tool back on and then we give it a little bit more. I think we need to come out a little, I think we need to come just out a, a tiny, tiny bit. bit. Yep. Make sure your vice is rock hard tight. Right, again, put your tool in exactly the same place, against the weld, but not on the weld. Yep. And then just bend it. Right. It's not too bad, is it? It's, nah. It bends quite nice. This weld is not taking any stress, so that will never crack. Well, well, I won't say won't never. Crack whilst you're bending it. <laughs> yeah. So it needs a tweak more because the just, gap is just just a little wider. bit more. So we'll go back on. Obviously, make sure you're straight with this because you don't want a twisted bend. We'll get Dom to give it another little tweak. I go on, a little, a little touch more. There you go. You reckon? I yeah. don't think that done it. I reckon that done more than enough. Mm, I reckon you need a little one, bit more. One more tweak, yeah? One little bit. So, tools on straight. Oh, there we go. Plenty. And th this is a brilliant idea from MB Special, so. The only thing with it is really heavy, so it's <laughs> sort of, you feel like you have to push hard. There we go, so now that's, yeah. that's a nice fingers width between. So that is your first bend pulled. Right, let's move on to the second one. So if you can see that. So the next thing it says in the guide, guys, is to measure up from this thing, I think, I believe it's 50 mil from this bend. The rear section should be bent 45 degrees from where the rounded tube meets the flat bar. Then another 45 degrees bent on the flat bar at 50 millimeters from the cool. previous bend. So get yourself your set square, measure your 50 mil from the previous bend. Now what I will say, is that the first bend isn't as important because you go as close to the weld as possible now. The second bend, to get your bend in the perfect position, you have one of two options. You either test, test one and then measure where it comes versus where you want it to go. Or what we found is in our vise, with that tool, if you put the, the paint, the, um, the drawn line, Rob's having a shocker here. If you put the drawn line so it's just visible on the edge of the vise. So the pen, the paint pen mark is literally as if we'd have got the pen and drawn up the side of the vise there. Yep. When you bend it, that keeps your 50 millimeters between bends. Yep. Also make sure you're bending the right way yes. because it's very easy to get disorientated and do it wrong. Um. <laughs> so now we can pull this bend in. Obviously this one weren't too bad, was it? But right. if we... Have another little go. And what with this one, guys, it's quite easy to tell when you're at 45 degrees because you've got your parallel here, you want your parallel there. Tiny bit more? Yep. Okay. You happy we, with that? We'll have a little check, shall we? Let's have a little look. 
Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So cool. And right. Let's, let's check the old fifty mil difference, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Go on. See how good we are. Or not. <laughs> oh. 49 mil. We'll take that. Right. We'll take that all day long. To, to the car. So, so that's the finished article. We can get this bolted on the car temporarily because it's obviously going to have to go and get powder coat from Alloy Stars. But what we'll do, we'll get to the car, we'll get this on and we can sit the wing on and see what we're looking like. Yes, we shall. Now, you can, of course, obviously paint it or powder coat it. We're just powder coating it because everything else is powder coated. And Alloy Stars do an amazing job. Plus, it's got to look new in it. Yeah, it has got to look new. <laughs> we might... I say might, we might even add a third fixture point because what you've got, you've got two points so it can flex. Um, so what the best thing is for rigidity is to have a triangle. So you have three fixture points in a triangle. So I think we might personally add another little fixing point on just so we don't have any flex and no cracking. Now we have the, the bracket support fitted. We, that is the second time we've done it. So if you follow the guide, it's for, I think, I believe CSR uh, wings, which are round and then they're, uh, they're sort of curved with a straight and then they come down. So obviously that was following the guide. But then when we put ours on, ours are just round, like, sem like sort of circular. So there's no sort of flat spot. So when we had the 50 mil at the front, 70, at the well, front. Sorry, 70 mil at the front and 50 at the back, the gap was different between the tire. And that's obviously where the CSRs is different. We so, realised, yeah. Yeah, so then we took it off again. We uh, got the bend flat and then we re-pulled our bend at 70 mil. So now they're both equal. Um, obviously, the next thing to do, you get the you get your uh, bracket powder coated or you can get your, depends on how you're going to fix the arch. You can either get your holes drilled now so then when it's powder coated, the, the holes are powder coated as well or you, you, you silicone it on. But that is basically how the arch goes. The only thing we've got to work out is where on the, the bracket that the arch sits, whether it goes more to the back for spray, obviously more to the front. So we're gonna have to consult the IVA manual for that. Yeah, there's a few things, because it can go left and right as well, can't it? Yeah, you can go over to the left. There's not much play. The rules are it needs to cover the outside edge of and the, the tire. And yeah. the inside. Yeah, but obviously- cover both. Yeah, yeah. So it needs to cover both. It needs to be obviously bigger than the tire itself. But I in UK reckon... law, is the wheel rim is and the tire isn't allowed to yeah. protrude the external of the vehicle. So, but I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't have it anyway because it would look weird. Ideally, you want it level and level. Yeah, I think we're just going to try central. and go central because yeah. then when you see it from the front, the wheel is centre of the arch. I know on my Westfield, I I struggled because I had quite a dodgy offset. It was well far over and it looked horrendous. Plus, but, you want the spray yeah. in the middle. The yeah. spray won't come out the side. But we're, we're going to drill them and we're going to fix them. So we will do that. We'll get them off for powder coating. And then on a later video, we can obviously show you them all fitted and powder coated and lovely. And like I said earlier, we're also going to add a little bracket um, just so you have that triangular fix. Not everyone has to do that, but um, that is one of them. Should we take a look at it, what it looks like side on? Yeah, should we? I'll turn the wheel and yep. then we can have a little look side on. So... This is it side on, this is it fixed. Obviously you fit to the bottom um, that ball joint. One thing I will say, the bracket only had a, I think it was like a 14 or a 12 mil hole drilled through and we had to up that to 14 mil because Plus, of the size of our bush. We reckon you're gonna need to do something with the king nut because it doesn't actually have enough thread coming through to actually put a split pin in. So we're gonna have to address that. That'll later probably day. be a nylock. And then the other one obviously goes on to your brake caliper fixing point. What I was saying is obviously here you used to have a speed sensor or a, an ABS sensor. Yep. There's a perfectly good thread there. So we could potentially weld a little bracket with an L shape onto there just to give you that triangular fixture to make that extra yep. solid. You don't need to do this guys, but for us, we're doing it once, we're doing it right, and we don't want any breakages. We don't want this falling off. So we're gonna be fixing everything. Do you wanna spin it round as well so we can see it from the other side? Yeah, mate. Give us a bit of lock to lock. Stand back a bit. Now look at that. That is with the arch just resting on. But if we roughly go sort of center center. And if you can imagine there was a lesser gap at the back, it yeah. looks weird. And that's not even, there's not even much clearance in that already. I so. mean, you kind of hope that you're not gonna get sucked things in like stones and rocks and twigs and whatever, but no. you do want a slight gap because if you do flick up stones with the water or whatever when it's wet, you want somewhere for it to go rather than just smashing your arch to bits. 
But yeah, that is not a bad video. The only other things we've got to do, like we said earlier, put the indicator in. Do you want to show them what it looks like more further forward or more further back? So yeah. So you get an idea of... So see, that's kind of level, but looks yeah. weird. Um, and too, too far back, I think. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, so I think, I reckon somewhere about... Yeah, more to the back than the front, but not too but not much. not too yeah. much. And then it'll just be centre of the bracket. And that'll just have two little fixture points. Sort of just yeah. when it comes flat, we'll probably have one there, one there. Same line up at the back, we'll measure it so it's all equal. And that is that. And that is a lovely carbon fibre arch yet again more carbon <laughs> but yeah. yeah we'll um we'll wrap that video up there guys hope you've enjoyed it drop down in the comments what arch you would fit we would have had the csr the rounded fiberglass carbon what's your favorite but yeah thanks for watching bye for now see you later guys